today I wanted to talk about technology, but at the same time I also want to show what the connex is with the human factor. And when we talk about technology, when we talk about the human factor, there's always a little bit of a disconnect. Today, when I talk about business transparency, I want to also show you what technology can do to increase business transparency, to bring trust back into a system that might have gone away. There you go. Let me step back real quick and, and uh, also explain a bit what is blockchain or what is what we call outside of cryptocurrencies a distributed ledger technology. If you think about the way our uh, banking system is or financial systems are, then we have a centralized system. You give money to somebody for a service, but in the back end you actually have a lot of intermediaries, another person, a bank, and then ending, of course, in the central bank that again is connected to all kinds of other banks. In a decentralized system, you have primar primarily like the internet, you have a lot of uh, people, a lot of entities, a lot of systems talking to one another, connecting to uh, one another, but you know, in a more decentralized uh, step. And when we talk about distributed ledger technology or blockchain, it's fully distributed. Distributed means peer-to-peer, person-to-person, machine-to-machine, no central hub where the information is passed through, but many, many, many nodes that uh, the, the information can pass through. Through distributed technology and distributed ledgers, there's one very, very key thing that we can actually add to the Internet. So in the past 25 years, the Internet has, of course, grown Mobile technology, mobile internet has grown, but there is still one factor that is missing, and that is the identity, right? Who's actually on the other side? What, can we actually trust this information? How do we transfer value? Value between people, value between different businesses, and at the same time find out, you know, who is it? And through distributed ledger technology, we have the possibility to not only to create a transparent system, but also a mutable system, one that cannot be changed, a list that cannot be changed, but everybody has access to that same list, and a system that is autonomous. So there, there's not one central system that controls it. Everybody that is part of the system is playing an important role in controlling the system. Today, we hear a lot about cryptocurrency, a lot about blockchain, and there's a hype. There's a lot of money going into this seg sector right now. There's over a billion euros going in, and there's going to be another billion euros going into the funding uh, of corporations or startups when it comes to uh, blockchain and digital ledger technology, uh, distributed ledger technology. And one of the interesting things that we've also seen over the past 12 months is that there's more than 20 governments the governments themselves investing in distributed ledger technology. And the question is, why would governments actually play a role? Well, if you go back to the internet, government played an a essential role in creating the, the distributed system, right? And the technology behind it. And when we look at today, uh, distributed ledger technology, or DLT, there's one, uh, key thing that governments can actually gain, and that is efficiency in the administration and also transparency of that administration. What we'll see, there's a lot of opportunities, right? But it will, through distributed ledger technology and adding this on to our digital world and also to the systems that are connected, the way we're connected will fundamentally change how we can actually deploy technology, and most likely, you are not going to even see it. You're not going to see the technology. It's going to be universal, as universal as the mobile phone that you have in your pocket or, or in, your, uh, in your bag right now. When we look at the transaction improvements, right, today a lot of things are manual. Checking on who you're working with, who's your counterparty. I myself worked in more than 40 countries, and sometimes I didn't even know who the person 
uh, is the sitting across the table, I couldn't verify that person. I couldn't verify the company. Right? There was no transparency. It was very, very difficult. There was no automated system. And this is changing. It's changing to where we can make sure that everybody, be it governments, be it large corporations, but also individuals, get the same level of access to information about companies and, most importantly, also the people behind these companies. There are a lot of threats, of course. New technology. There's a, as I said, there's a hype cycle right now, right? There's a lot of money going in, it's uncertain. Some of the technologies that we see that are deployed and where there's a lot of investment going in might actually fail, right? And they sometimes also fail because of the human factor, as I mentioned before, the human factor that is forgotten about. Distributed ledger technology itself is not really new. There are registers, they're digital registers. Just think of the land registers, right? Where you actually know who owns what, when have there been changes. But this is not something that is universal throughout the world. It is something that highly developed economies and countries have actually already implemented because they needed a, a system that allows trust and also the reliability of information to be available. There's one um, example that I would like to share with you. Uh, a few years ago, about two years ago, there was a project in Honduras where they had a massive problem. It wasn't clear who owns which property. You couldn't go and just find out, okay, this person owns their house, their little hut, their little, their little plot. So there was a government initiative, a government, uh, government initiative to bring transparency and to also take a leap forward by using distributed uh, ledger technology to make sure that there is a land register. And in this land register, in this new project, there was the possibility for transparency, not only who owned the property, but also which government official made changes, when were there transactions, what are the transactions. There was a full transparency. Now I have a question. So now it's, you know, going into the fourth quarter of 2016, so we're coming to the end of the year, about two years later. Where do you think that that project stands today? Anybody? <laughs> it's dead. Well, it actually started, but all of a sudden there was transparency and it, it was clear that there was corruption within the government, be it locally, etc., and they pulled the plug on the project. It was the human factor that actually stopped the project, not the technology, right? But the interaction and the human factor, and of course, uh, a system that uh, clearly did not want to take this leap now because all of a sudden everybody was on the same level of information. And there was also another uh, case uh, about uh, a year ago where the idea was that we don't need government, we don't need banks, we don't even need lawyers maybe, of a group of people that put more than $160 million, $160 million, into uh, a distributed autonomous uh, organization, DAO Hub. I'm sure you've heard about it. It was created by two uh, German um, guys who wanted to change the way we invest in companies. There were 10,000 people, 10,000 people that by majority vote could decide that yes, we want to invest in that startup, in that project, and so forth. The technology worked fine. The funding was there, the money was there, but again, the human factor was the biggest problem because somebody found a way to game the system and draw 60 million out of the system. They didn't disappear, but it was a system that was, was written by humans, obviously, and it made totally sense. Technically, everything worked, but the human factor was, uh, was not counted into the system. But the good thing was that through the transparency, and also through the technological advance, we could actually then also backtrack what had happened. But here we had a question as well on the technology, borderless, less government, but who do we actually call when the human factor uh, fails the, the, the system? Who do you call? Is it a government? Is it an authority? Right now the regulation is one of the 
the limiting factors in deploying this technology. It's pretty much like building a massive autobahn, a massive high-speed uh, you know, road system, but we don't tell drivers if they can drive on the left or on the right. And this is where we are. We do have to look at how do we create an environment? How do we create a standard? How do we move this new technology beyond this application stage to be part of the infrastructure? And if it becomes part of the infrastructure, then obviously we will not even see it because it will be universal. Because today, I don't think anybody asks, do I drive on the left or on the right? There is regulation, there is a system, right? And moving forward and uh, looking at what does this mean for business transparency? Well, we've created a, a system that allows you to address and access company information cross-border, giving everybody the same tools, the same power to identify not only the companies and do they exist, but of course also the people behind those companies in order to raise a level of transparency that allows us to build trust back into business. And if we look at the possibility of technology, this is going to be very, very rapid. And we're also going to be able to restart the way we conduct business and go back to the roots, to what it means to create a business at the same time offer no transparency. And I think the technology will help us to achieve this very, very quickly. Thank you very much.